Good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for joining uh, today's webinar. Uh, today, we're going to be finally introducing Capture One Pro 8, which is fantastic because I've been using it for quite a few number of months now. It's been very frustrating having to show seven when I knew I had a much better application uh, sitting on the laptop. So it's great that we can now start showing you all the fantastic things about it. If this is your uh, first webinar, uh, so you know who you're listening to and talking to. My name is David. I'm part of the software marketing team based out of Copenhagen in Denmark. Uh, we have the next uh, hour with each other, 45 to 60 minutes. Uh, probably we will hit the full 60 minutes today because uh, there's uh, so much to talk about essentially. So what we are going to talk about today is an introduction to Capture One. So it's geared more at those of you who haven't necessarily spent much time with Capture One before. So it will be a little bit more basic. If after today you're intrigued or if you're an existing user and you want to know a bit more and we can explore it further, then tomorrow um, I'm doing a second webinar called Why Upgrade, uh, which is more targeted to the existing users. So you can see a bit more in depth about all the new features. Uh, so I'll give you details on how to register for that. And then you can uh, carry on your introduction to Capture One uh, tomorrow as such. The webinar is uh, being recorded. Um, so you will be able to watch it again. You'll receive a follow-up email in one to two days time approximately, and that will have a link to a YouTube um, recording uh, where you can then watch the uh, uh, the webinar again. Uh, there's no holding page yet for recorded webinars on phase1.com because we had a complete website redesign, which you may or may not have noticed. And uh, we have to add that landing page for the webinars in at a later date, but we will do. But all of you here today will be able to watch uh, the webinar again. So without further ado, let's uh, switch over to uh, Capture One 8, which is uh, very nice, as I said before. So give me a second, I'm just gonna switch uh, screens. Uh, so please select your Capture One 8 product. This is what you see when you will launch Capture One. There is only one installer for uh, Capture One. So Pro, Pro for Sony, which I just explained is the same as Pro, but for Sony cameras only. Uh, Express for Sony, uh, which has fewer features than Pro, but is completely free if you are a Sony owner but uh, it doesn't have things like local adjustments, you can't customize the interface and so on. But it is free for Sony cameras uh, only as such. And DB, for those of you on um, uh, using phase cameras, leaf cameras and so on and so forth, um, that's the free version for you, the DB at the bottom. I'm just gonna delete all the yes and no's on the uh, questions panel. So there's uh, room for questions that I can see. I've got a lot of no's, I can't see the screens, and yes, I can't talk the screen. Okay. All righty. Uh, people are saying, what happened to Express? Well, basically, uh, we decided that uh, it's easier to support and better for you to support one application pro. Those of you who are using Express currently and want to upgrade, you're going to pay exactly the same upgrade price from Express to Pro as someone from Pro to Pro. So you, you actually get a really good deal. Uh, of course, if you don't want to use all the features, you don't have to, uh, but the upgrade price from Express to Pro is uh, a really fantastic deal. So um, EJ is asking, is Sony Pro a separate installation? No, it's all one package. So when you download Capture One on our website, so you can say, try Capture One, and uh, you can download there. It's one installer. And when you launch Capture One, you get to start up here. It's a 60 day trial. So you see, I've got 47 days left. With that trial, you can chop and change between the versions. So you can evaluate Pro. Uh, if you're a Sony owner, you could evaluate Express and so on if you wanted to. OK, so let's uh, say try and let's just move into Capture One and then we can talk a little bit about the uh, new features. So I'm just loading up a catalog. Uh, there is um, a difference um, in terms of uh, um, performance. So if we think about uh, the new features of Capture One, we can split it up into purely performance and then purely new tools and adjustments and features and uh, and things like that. So if we talk about performance, and this doesn't mean that you have to have the greatest all singing, all dancing um, 
fantastic Mac. Uh, the Mac that this is running on right now is definitely not an all dancing and all singing fantastic Mac. It's a MacBook Pro, which is uh, late 2011. So it's nothing uh, super fancy. Uh, a new one is arriving next week. Unfortunately, didn't make it in time for this webinar. But uh, the good thing is, is that that performance gains are pretty much across the board. So if you don't have a Mac Pro Dual D700 fantastic machine with 64 gigabytes of RAM, uh, you still uh, get the benefit as such. Um, and the benefit would be, for example, if uh, uh, we're just navigating, let's just hide my viewer for the moment so we can see our thumbnails here. No lag in scrolling through uh, thumbnails. If I want to uh, move into or sort of open up another picture, we can just double click like so. Comes in nice and fast. Double click uh, right here to see zooms to 100%. When I scroll around the uh, uh, the image as such, you see there's virtually no delay in looking at the image. Um, this isn't a tiny two megapixel file. It's uh, uh, from a Sony A7, so it's uh, relatively large, but there's no issue uh, with the software handling it as such. So double click and such uh, works really, really nicely. So that kind of performance thing, uh, you're going to see all of you when moving around the software. In terms of uh, other things, and we do a little workflow in a minute so you can see other performance benefits uh, across is in terms of when you're opening catalogs or opening big sessions. This is a relatively small catalog. It's only 630 images. But if I think about my own catalog, which is about 10,000 images, uh, when that was opened in um, Capture on 7, it would take two or three minutes to, if you like, become ready to, to usably be able to, to work on it as such. Whereas in Capture One Pro 8, I open the catalog and it's ready. It's a, an instant. So we've gone from sort of a, a three minute open time to uh, a zero minute open time. So that's a, a huge, a huge increase in performance. So you're all going to experience that. And just simple thing like if uh, I take the loop tool, for example, and then let's just have a look at our uh, white tiger. So if we bring up the loop on uh, this image, for example, uh, sometimes the whack on misbehaves a bit with the loop tool. So you can see as I move around the various different thumbnails that we don't really have any delay whatsoever in rendering to 100%. As I said, you're all going to experience that. If you are lucky enough to have uh, a Mac Pro 700, uh, sorry, a Mac Pro with the dual D700 cards, you're going to have stratospheric performance in, in terms of zooming to 100%. Processing files, you'll spit out like Nikon D800 files in you know half a second and things like that. So obviously, the more power you have, uh, the better it is. Uh, Anthony, good question. Is there an amount of images that it will start to lag or max number of images? Well, on Capture One 7, if you hit kind of more than 100,000 images, then it was starting to, to bog down. But one of the features, if you like, of Capture One Pro 8 uh, is that the handling of uh, larger catalogs is uh, so much better. So no, there shouldn't really be uh, um, uh, a uh, issue with handling large amounts of uh, files. Uh, Dan was asking, can you show how to view all the thumbnails? Yes, um, it's just a simple shortcut. Uh, uh, if you go to the view menu, we'll have a look at the interface in more detail, but that's something I do a fair bit. Hide viewer, you can see there. So that's just a simple hide and show viewer. By default, I think it's option command V uh, for the, uh, um, the, the standard shortcut. But the nice thing about Capture One, and we'll look at that in a second, is that you can customize that interface. So I've just changed the shortcut to G. So if I tap G on the keyboard, then I can just click in and out like so of uh, the hide and show viewer. I think that works uh, uh, much better. Uh, Remco is saying, do I uh, recommend um, a catalog? Well, it depends on what you're doing. Uh, in Capture One, you can store your images in a catalog. If you're coming from Aperture or Lightroom, that's uh, um, a very similar uh, way, if you like, of, of working. Lightroom used a catalog. Aperture used a library or vice versa. I can't remember the terminology, uh, but very, very uh, uh, similar. You can work in a session in a Capture One. Uh, which is basically a group of nested folders. So you have your capture folder, your selects folder, your output folder, and you can uh, 
uh, change that structure to whatever you like. So it, it varies. It depends what you want to do. If you're shooting tethered, in some ways, it works uh, better to shoot into a session. But there'll be webinars coming up later on when we can talk more uh, about the file management uh, side of things. Okay, sorry if some of you are still having audio issues. It looks uh, fine on my end as such. I don't have any connection issues here. So uh, sorry if uh, you are having audio issues. It is being recorded. So if you do have a couple of dropouts, uh, then don't worry, you can watch uh, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the recording. Uh, performance wise, Remco is asking should be much better for uh, sessions as well. So the performance gains is not just catalog, it's across Capture One uh, as a whole uh, as such. Yes, Roy, I know some of you use Windows and it's the same for Windows too. So performance is not just for Mac, it's for Windows as well. So Windows, we still access the graphics card um, to increase performance. And it's not like Mac is going to be faster. In some cases, Windows is probably going to be faster for less money. That's always the uh, the way with uh, uh, Apple, as, Apple as well. Okay, well, some of you are saying the audio is great, uh, especially in Arizona, so that's good. So um, hopefully it's uh, it's uh, not at my end, but just let me know if it becomes unusable. Okay, so let's move on. We're going to do a simple workflow where we can take in more of the new features as such and also uh, see the performance benefits as well. I'm just going to make a quick new catalog. So let's just say new catalog. This is a pro feature. You can't do this in the express uh, version. So let's just say webinar catalog here. This is just creating the uh, the database for the catalog uh, right now. And I'm just going to say, OK. And you see I get a new catalog open here. So there's nothing to stop me working with one or two or three catalogs at the same time. It's no limitations in Capture One for that as such. And all I've done here, if I do a right click on the, the name, is that we've created the uh, catalog database, which is currently empty. Let's just make this a bit larger. Now to get images into the catalog, no prizes for guessing. There's a large button in the center that says import. It's the same one up here in the top left as well. So let's say import images. Now I've got a, a small um, hard drive uh, attached. I'll just show you where it is. So select folder up there. We've got image drive two, and I just have a folder uh, with 30 odd images in there. None of us want to sit through and uh, watch uh, a progress bar. So I've just got a small selection of uh, images like so, 34 images. I won't go into detail about the import window, um, but it's very self-explanatory. You basically have an import from, this could be your memory card or an existing nest of folders on your system. So if you have a, a, a structure where you have uh, multiple subfolders, you can just check the box, include subfolders, and Capture One will find all the images within those subfolders. Next option is where do you want to import those images to? Uh, by default, they will be left at their current location. So they're just going to stay on that hard drive, but the catalog will know how to access them. Or you can say inside catalog, that's like an aperture where you have a managed library, the images will be copied directly inside the catalog database. You can, of course, choose a folder if you want to move or sorry, copy those images elsewhere. But I'm just going to say current location. Then you have options for backing up, renaming, adding metadata, adding an, uh, an adjustment via a Capture One style, which is just basically groups of different adjustments in Capture One as such. You can make your own styles, and if there's time, we'll have a look at that later. So that's uh, 34 images uh, at their current location, let's say uh, import. You can see the thumbnails come in almost instantaneously, and what Capture One do, will do now is build the previews. Ignore the, uh, uh, the time that it's stating here. This is uh, something that will be fixed in 801, is that the activity bar sometimes gives you slightly uh, spurious um, um, um outputs in terms of time so that's just uh, a few minutes to go okay so uh, glad that the audio seems to be fine now thank you uh, thank you very much so if it's good in canada and arizona it must be good uh, everywhere else so performance wise there's a good gain in terms of um uh, importing writing the previews and so on if you're used to lightroom uh, then of course the previews that 
you see generated here, uh, there's smart previews. Uh, so that means even if I was to disconnect that hard drive, for example, you would still be able to view the contents of your catalog. You could still make adjustments and so on. So it's no different in your experience there with Lightroom or Aperture, for example. It's the same in Capture One. It's actually very simple because you don't have to instruct Capture One to build a smart preview. It's done by default. Uh, the only option that you can do in Capture One is under Preferences. Uh, under image, you can choose the size of your preview image size. So obviously a larger preview image size looks better on screen in Capture One, uh, but it takes slightly longer to build. Um, but if you have a reasonable Mac, I mean, this process is finished now of, of building the previews, uh, then it's uh, kind of mute, uh, moot rather. Um, if you have smaller previews, they build much quicker, but they don't look as nice in uh, the preview window as such. So that will get you started into Capture One if you just want to import a few images into the application and uh, try them out uh, as such. OK. Um, Set Dominguez, what a great name, says I have tons of images in my computer. What can I do to not duplicate it? Well, remember the import process I did there, we're not duplicating images, uh, we're just referencing is the correct term the images in their current location uh, so we're not moving copying or anything they're just staying on their current location as indicated over here so this is showing me that the current set of images i'm looking at this one here 34 images belong on image drive so i haven't duplicated any images or copied or anything like that so if you happen to have these images in the lightroom catalog or an aperture catalog it doesn't matter we don't edit anything in the raw file, we're simply reading the raw file. So it's uh, it's uh, quite safe. Uh, Ian is asking, can you just browse folders? Yes, if you purely want a browsing application, you can do that in Capture One as well. It's very simple. If you just say a uh, new session, uh, ignore everything here, just give it a name. I'll just call it browser if you like. That opens a new session and you can see here under system folders, you can pretty much browse any folder and the image will pop up. So if you want to do it in a really simple way, you can do that too. So that's just say file, new session, and away you go. It's not necessarily the most efficient way to do it because the benefit of having a catalog is uh, being able to search for images, being able to filter your results and so on. You can't do that as effectively in a file browser. But if you want to keep it super, super simple, uh, you can do it like that. Uh, Dan is asking, can you still work on photos while the previews are being built? Correct. Yes. So let's say you imported 500 images. Uh, basically, you can double tap on the first image and then you can start to uh, zoom in it and check focus and so on and so forth and adjust them. Exactly. Even if you pick an image that hasn't had its preview built yet, then it will build it for you straight away. So it's not like you have to wait for the import process to uh, end. Uh, Pat's asking, can you reset the link if you move the original images to another disk? Yes, there's a few things you can do. And as we're talking about catalogs, let's just show you a new feature. So if I bring up my um, finder, same in Windows. So we had uh, the images were here. This is the images we imported. Uh, now, for example, if I do something uh, like this, let's just grab um, an image here. I'm just going to move it over to that folder. So I've now changed the contents of uh, this folder. Now on Capture One 7, you would have to go through the import process again and so on. Whereas in 8, all I need to do is say right click and synchronize and you see it's found that i've put one new image into that folder and i can show the importer if i wish or i can just say uh, synchronize and then hey presto uh, the image uh, has popped up so that's another new feature that you can synchronize any of your folders so on capture on seven you had to move images around within this area here uh, if you didn't do that you had to do a locate function which was a little bit more complicated so now if you want to move images about in the finder all you need to do is synchronize uh, your folders uh, as such 
uh, Russell is asking, good question, can Capture One share the same folder as Lightroom? Yes, it will create separate adjustments. All the adjustments for the images in Capture One are held in here, in the webinar catalog. So you can point exactly the same, well, sorry, you can point Capture One to exactly the same set of folders or images as Lightroom, and it doesn't matter. It builds different previews, builds different adjustments, and so on. Uh, if you want to, um, for example, import your entire Lightroom catalog or your entire Aperture library, you can do so by saying File, Import Catalog, and choosing Lightroom or Aperture, like so. So let's pick Aperture, for example. Uh, basically, it's the same for Aperture and the same for Lightroom. Uh, you just point after you say Continue, you just point Capture One to the Aperture library or the Lightroom.lr cat. Uh, we can bring some things in. We can bring in like your projects, organization, uh, and so on. We can bring in the crop, straightening, uh, basic adjustments like exposure, contrast, saturation, etc. All the metadata in terms of uh, rating, star rating, and so on. Uh, we can't bring in smart albums. Same goes for Lightroom. So you have to convert those to normal albums if you still want those. And then what we do is we build a capture one. Uh, catalog. It will build all new previews and we read the information that we can from the Aperture or Lightroom library. So it will get you started if you like, if you want to move everything across. But of course, the color adjustments are approximate because the color engine is completely different in Capture One. Uh, superior, of course, I'd like to say, uh, compared to Aperture and uh, Lightroom, but it gets you started. But if you simply want to play in Capture One, you could just import one folder of images, for example, and start to uh, play around uh, play around for that. Okay. Um, sorry, there's lots of questions in, so I'm, I'm just have to pick and choose. I'm sorry I can't answer all of yours. Um, Dan is asking, and this probably relates to Daniel as well, would the synchronized feature be useful when wanting to use Photoshop? Yeah, of course, if you wanted to export this image here, if I exported it to uh, the same folder, then I could just right click and say synchronize, and then my TIFF would pop up alongside um, uh, the, the existing rule. So yes, it's not like a true round trip, but the only thing you've got to do is uh, synchronize and then it's, it's done. Uh, Andreas is asking, do I need Media Pro? Well, it, it depends really. Uh, so it's it's up to you. I mean, Media Pro is a, is a dam, an asset manager, but so is Capture One. I mean, what Media Pro does better is that it can catalog other things like uh, PDF documents, Word files, and so on. If you're looking purely for a, an image editor so, or an image dam, then it would probably make more sense to use Capture One because then you've got your editor and dam in the same place. So one other final thing we look at with catalogs, um, before we move on is uh, the ability. I'm just going to make a little uh, collection here. Uh, let's just make an album. You can do that by hitting the plus button there. This is like making a collection in Lightroom or an album in Aperture. Uh, so let's just call this uh, images for want of a, a less uh, creative word. So if we just drag and drop a few images there, you can do single drag and drops, of course. There's other ways you can do this, but that that will come uh, later webinars. I can do a shift select like that and drag them in. So now I've got a collection of uh, eight different images here. What I can do, which you couldn't do in version seven, is that we could export by doing a right click here and saying export as catalog. And this will make you a totally separate catalog or a sub catalog, if you like. Uh, so I'll just call that sub catalog to be uh, less creative. If you want, you can call, you can include the originals. This, this will make a physical copy of the raw files and tuck them inside the catalog. So if I say export as catalog like so, it'll just take a couple of seconds to um, export. I think that's pretty much done. So completed as you can see. And now if I do a file open, uh, you'll see the catalog here. It's now a completely independent catalog. If I say open, 
with the images inside like so. So that works great if, uh, for a couple of reasons. If you're a traveler, uh, then you could, uh, on your laptop, for example, you could create a catalog of your, of your recent trip or project. When you get back home, uh, you can, of course, now import this catalog into your master catalog. So we could then say file, import a capture one catalog and bring that into a master catalog. Uh, if there's duplicates, the catalog will handle that. It'll make additional uh, variants, uh, which is uh, uh, the capture one word for, you know, different uh, variations of, of the same image as such. Okay. Uh, Chris is asking, are we going to integrate Media Pro features for video, et cetera? Well, it, it sort of depends on demand, of course, but obviously the more we can do in Capture One to improve the dam facility, the better. So uh, I would say there's lots of things we can do to improve and we just need to look at uh, the one which uh, makes sense as such. Okay, let's switch to a bigger catalog and um, we can... Uh, look at some of the image adjustments because that's to be honest much more fun than just talking about uh, catalogs uh, so let's just get up uh, this guy now in terms of some basic action now we've got some adjusted images to look at um, zoom into 100 uh, percent you see up here we've got various different cursor tools these change the behavior of the capture one cursor so a little bit different to Lightroom and Aperture in uh, that respect. So for example, if I just have the normal select tool, uh, it doesn't do a lot as such. That's just for sort of selecting uh, different images and so on. If I have the hand tool or pan tool, as it's known, uh, double click will take you to 100%. Then obviously uh, panning will uh, move you around the uh, image as such. Like Photoshop, a lot of the keyboard shortcuts are exactly the same. So command zero fits you to screen, option command zero, uh, takes you to 100% and so on. You don't have to remember all of those, fortunately. If you go to the help up the top, you'll see keyboard shortcut summary, and that will open a web page with all the keyboard shortcuts, all of which can be changed to your own preference. So if you don't like a particular keyboard shortcut, and there are plenty in there which uh, I change, then you can simply edit your own keyboard shortcuts. Uh, each of the cursor tools, you saw the loop uh, briefly earlier, uh, have a, a shortcut key. So you can see to access the crop, you can press C on the keyboard, and now you have access to uh, the crop tool, for example. Uh, you can rotate with the crop tool if you just hover on the corner like so, then you can pull a rotation without having to go into a different tool or, or anything like that. So that's a new feature in uh, version 8. Hardly, hardly a feature, that's a strong word, but an improvement with the uh, crop um, implementation. So all these various different cursor tools, and we won't go through every single one. There isn't obviously a uh, uh, time uh, for that as such. On the left, you've got your various different tool tabs. These contain all the tools. If I just flick through them, so there's a bunch of tools that you can work with all the various tools that uh, you can use in Capture One. Uh, if you hover over the tool tab, it'll give you a name of the tab. So exposure, color, lens corrections, crop, sorry, composition, details, and so on. Now, all of this can be customized. So for example, um, if you want to add an additional tool to the exposure tab, you can just right click and pick a tool. Let's say you wanted to have, uh, I don't know, um, the film grain tool, that's a new one. You can add that and it's here. You can change position of the tools. You can make them floating. You can expand and collapse and you can simply remove them like so. So all this can be customized. Um, by default, you'll see the tools on the left, the browser at the bottom, like a film strip and the viewer in the center. If you go to the view menu, then if you look in these two boxes here, uh, for example, we could place the browser up on the right, which a lot of people like, gives you a bit more image real estate. You can change the size of uh, it here, for example, and uh, change the size of the, uh, excuse me, uh, the order and so on and so forth. All of these bounding boxes, maybe, I don't know if bounding box isn't the right word, but uh, separation line, you can uh, make your tool area bigger and smaller and you can make the thumbnails bigger and smaller and so on. 
as you've played around with the space, just explore. You can't damage anything or mess anything up. Uh, you can always go back to the default workspace right here under window. Uh, you can save your workspace, of course, and then saved workspaces will pop up here. And this is my uh, default workspace, which looks pretty much like the similar, except I add a white balance tool inside the exposure tool tab. That's just makes more sense to me. Uh, Remco is asking, can you use EIP packaging? Uh, EIP is like a, a, a wrapped up phase one raw file with adjustments, um, which uh, is more popular in sessions. Uh, you can import it into a catalog, Remco, but it will unpack uh, the uh, EIP. Oh, and Dan, he's got a suggestion for us. Please let everyone know you can create an entirely new tab with just your favorite tools. Yes, that's a, a great suggestion. So if I just make this bigger, if you do a right click, you see you can add a tool tab. So custom tool tab, like so. Uh, you can give it a name like David's tools. Uh, you can pick a jazzy icon. Let's have a star and say add tab. And now if you right click, you can simply add the various different tools you want to that tab. So I think this is a, a, a huge uh, benefit to Capture One, just it makes it so nice to work with because you can decide pretty much uh, where all your tools are as such. Let's have a look at some of the improvements. Oh, sorry, let's just uh, talk about basic adjustments so you know how that works. You don't need to be a genius probably to, to realize how these work, but there's a couple of little handy shortcuts. Uh, Moving the slider obviously changes the uh, uh, the value. Uh, if you put a value in, you can double click and it will take it back to uh, zero. If you want to preview what the tool is doing, uh, you see the reset icon here. If I do an option click, that just does a temporary reset of the tool itself. Uh, you can use the cursor keys as well if you want to make uh, little small adjustments like so. Uh, so really nothing to, to teach yourself uh, there. There are some presets for most of the tools, and they give you a preview as you hover over the preset like so. And of course, you can save your own presets too. Some tools have a, an A, which is A for auto. That will do an auto adjust based on image data. Some have a question mark, which will take you to the uh, help pages uh, as such as well. So you should be able to use all the different tools. There's nothing too crazy there in terms of uh, uh, what's happening. Very intuitive in that respect. And we have a really nice levels tool that works exactly like you would expect. It does uh, pretty much the same as Photoshop. OK. Uh, Peter is asking, can you elaborate more about the changes in the HDR tool? Yes, with pleasure, because that's uh, what we're going to look at now. And uh, I'm going to bring up an image here uh, from a great photographer called Ryan. He's going to be on a webinar in a, a few weeks' time. So it's going to be uh, well worth joining that one. He's uh, an action sports photographer. You can see the kind of uh, imagery he produces and uh, attributes Capture One uh, a great deal to his success, which is nice. Now, a little important note about this tool here. You can see it up in the top right hand of the screen. I've just floated it so we can keep an eye on it. If you open an existing session or catalog from Capture One 7 into Capture One 8, it will upgrade it to the new catalog management on the new uh, session management. But your images, as you can see here, will still be running on the Capture One 7 engine because um, we don't um, make that adjustment automatically because that's up to you. We can't automatically change the way your images look because there is a tiny, tiny subtle difference between the version 7 engine and the version 8 engine. So it's up to you to upgrade it. So you can see here there's a button here. You can select multiple images and say upgrade, or you can do it on an image per image basis. But what this does mean is that we can uh, uh, change, um, uh, show you, sorry, the difference between the two various different engines. So let's go to, this is the Capture One 8 image. Let's just hide. Let's just bring that in a bit so we can see it better. Um, 
If I move the highlight slide all the way across gradually to the right, you can see what happens uh, to the image as such. Let's fit it to screen. There we go. That makes more sense. So you can see with zero high dynamic range or highlight recovery, you can see the difference like so. And I'm going to crank that all the way to 100%. This is Capture One 8, remember. Let's go to Capture One 7. Image looks pretty much the same between 8 and 7. There is better noise reduction in version 8. It's very hard to see that on a webinar transmission because your screen quality may vary a bit. But have a look at your images. You'll see better noise reduction. Now, this is simulating what Capture One 7 would do. If I bring the highlight slider all the way across, uh, you can see a difference. Basically, what's happening is that version 8 does a much better job of um, leaving mid-tones alone, I guess is a good way to, uh, to say it. Uh, so you can see on the right-hand side here that by trying to recover the highlights, we've affected too much of the mid-tones, like the C and the skin tone. And it looks ugly. It looks solarized. Uh, it doesn't look right. Whereas in Capture One 8, even at max 100, uh, we're still looking pretty nice on the image. Uh, what this does mean is that I found in my own kind of uh, working with uh, Capture One 8 for the few months is where before I've been using local adjustments to darken areas of an image or do gradated filters on skies and things like that. I'm doing less of that because the HDR tool is uh, working so much better. Uh, Dan is asking, how do I show the blown highlights? That's easy. Do uh, Command E on the keyboard. So if I do Command E, you can see your blown highlights. All it is is turning this little triangle on up in the top like so. You can adjust the level of when this pops in. So if we go to Preferences, uh, warnings, no, sorry, exposure. You can see here that um, my highlight warning will come in at 250, and then you can set a value for your shadow warning, like so. So that's either clicking the button on the toolbar, toolbar, sorry, <laughs> or Command D on the keyboard. And then we can see as I move the highlight slider down, what's happening. We pretty much got every scrap of highlight back. If we just go to uh, version seven, engine like so to remove everything we're at that point but you can see it's a dramatic difference it works so much better on version 8 um, i read a comment on a forum yesterday from a landscape photographer uh, basically her opinion that the the improvement in the hdr tool was worth uh, the upgrade alone because uh, she gets flawless skies it's not affecting the midtones as it was before uh, it works so much better uh, Derek is asking, what's the main difference between the 7 and 8 engine? Uh, you're going to see another difference in a minute. But uh, if we think about the engine as a whole, better noise reduction. Um, we've improved some of the color profiles on some of the cameras. Uh, we've got more possibilities for uh, local adjustments. Uh, Ian's asking, how do you upgrade multiple images? Uh, good point. Uh, basically, if you wanted to, let's say these were all on version 7. All you would have to do is say select all under edit here, select all, and just hit the upgrade button that you would see here. That's it. And it will upgrade them all as a as a batch. Simple. Uh, let's just bring our lady back up. In terms of the Capture One processing engine as well, uh, you'll see if I go to the version 7 that in local adjustments that a lot of this stuff isn't available because we've added more local adjustment possibilities in the Capture One 8 engine. So for example, if you did want to do just HDR, highlight recovery in a particular area, you can do that on a local adjustment layer. So very simple. Let's just take a brush, draw mask brush, um, draw in a mask. You can see where I'm drawing. It's just coming in red. I'm just going to do this quick and dirty. As such, we do a webinar completely on local adjustments coming up this year, I think. So, for example, easy mask like that, and now I can recover highlights just in the sky. You couldn't do that before in 7. It had to be over the, the whole image uh, as such. Uh, Anthony's asking, we are aware that uh, we can't, uh, we don't yet support the D810 uncompressed um, files. Yes, we know that, and that will be coming uh, to uh, 
um, a future release. The good thing is about Capture One Eight, as a side note, is that we can roll out updates much, much faster than we could with Seven for various reasons that I won't bore you with. Uh, but you'll be able to experience updates coming out much quicker than we did with uh, Seven. Yes, Derek, there is a batch rename feature. Uh, you can do that under import. Uh, you can also select any group of images and just do a right click and say rename. And then you'll have all kinds of options you'll see once you uh, enter, enter that dialogue. Thinking about uh, local adjustments more, uh, let's go to a different image and we're going to look at uh, local adjustments here. Another thing that we added for local adjustments, which will be a nice thing for you interior photographers out there is that you can do uh, white balance also on a local adjustment. So this is a really good example. We've got a typical thing. We've got some tungsten or fluorescent lights or whatever in the body of the, the building here. And we've got daylight streaming in for, from the left. So that's a completely different uh, color temperature very difficult to balance. You've either got to do it in Photoshop or compromise uh, and have not a correct one for each one. So all our photographer is done here. Uh, if I just hit uh, M on the keyboard to uh, show you the mask, simple gradation mask coming in from the left. You can see that in red. I'll hide the mask. And then basically on the local white balance layer that you can see here, we could just take our picker and we could just pick an area that we wanted to be balanced out and now you can see that we've got a much better balance than we did before and of course that you can infinitely adjust that by using the sliders so if you still want to have a hint of daylight in there you could just tweak uh, the kelvin slider so for interior photographers or any mixed lighting situation local white balance is uh, working really really nice um, Mike is asking, are there tools to auto select parts for masking? Yes, there is an auto, uh, auto mask option. I'll just show you where to find it. If you do a right click, you can turn auto masking on and then you can find your way around edges and, and objects and, and things like that. Good point from Jason to upgrade from seven to eight. Uh, you don't have to remove version seven. Uh, when you install version eight, just put the application in a, in a different folder. Um, your catalogs and sessions will stay uh, exactly as they are until you open it in version eight, and then it will upgrade it to a version eight catalog or session. If you want to be completely, completely sure, then you could work off a duplicate. You could just duplicate the, the session database or duplicate the catalog database. But to be perfectly honest, once you've had a taste of Capture One Eight, uh, you won't want to go back to seven. Uh, but of course, for, for cautiousness, then I'd suggest working off a, off a, a, a duplicate. Uh, Dan is asking, can you do an auto mask on a 16-bit TIFF? Good question, Dan. I'm not sure. I don't think so because it uses the Bayer pattern to calculate the auto masking. So to be honest, I haven't tried it, but um, that's something uh, I can try later on. Uh, Jason is asking, why would we not want to remove 7 off our computer? Well, backwards compatibility, cautiousness, lots of reasons. But um, since I've had version 8 for three or four months, I've only opened up 7 for webinars. And the rest of the time, I've been using 8 on my own catalog and everything. So uh, it's had the longest beta testing period of, ever, of any Capture One product, and it's working really nicely. There are some known issues, some little tiny things couple of cosmetic bits but nothing deal breaker as such okay um, also with local adjustments we've got the ability to do uh, repairs and healing cloning and that kind of stuff uh, so let's just bring up an example here also using the local adjustment layer somebody asked do we still have the 10 layer limit uh, yes we do uh, but other changes we made to local adjustments is that the speed which you can brush uh, is much more fluid, uh, quicker, works better. Uh, and again, that's not restricted to uh, giant Mac Pro dual D700 computers. That kind of goes across the board for anything, even my uh, weedy old laptop here. So how do we do uh, repair layers? I know it was a question that was asked earlier. So let's just zoom into our 
mountaineer here a bit. Let's just say we wanted to get rid of him. How do we do that? First of all, uh, hit the plus button and hold and make a new clone or heal layer. Clone is just a like for like copy. Uh, heal uh, uses, of course, uh, some intelligence to blend the source point to the, uh, the copy point. So if I say new heal layer, let's give it a name. I'll call this climber, like so. Uh, we've got our tool here. Like uh, Photoshop, you can select your uh, source point by holding the Alt key down. You see the cursor changes when I do that and setting my uh, source point like so. We can move it later if we wish. It doesn't matter. Then all I need to do now, uh, let's just make sure you can see the mask. All I need to do now is, is brush out my offending object like so. And then it's going to copy across. Now, what I need to do, that's where I started brushing, which was a bit silly of me. But fortunately, I can uh, move this down. And then as it's on a layer, I can just add a bit more mask to it like so. And then that takes him away quite nicely. As you can see, that's a heel. If it was a clone, I can turn it into a clone. Uh, you'll see the difference. It just doesn't work as nicely. Whereas if we say heel, then it does a much better job of, of blending background to foreground and so on. So we can use it for complex stuff like that. We can use it for basic things like if I just bring up this example, uh, there's a scratch somewhere. If I turn the layer off, there we go. That's just a scratch on the background, which we can take away with a, with a clone. Same principle. Uh, here, for example, we've got some um, almonds. So if we wanted to get rid of a couple up here, same thing applies. Turn on or make a new heel layer. Uh, it'll come up with a name. This is an 80 megapixel file, so it's uh, a bit more memory intensive for this little machine. Uh, then all we need to do is uh, get a slightly bigger brush, set our source point once more, uh, like so. And then we can just brush in and we can get rid of things like that. So very simple to use, done like so. So that's how the, the, the heal and clone works uh, as such. Uh, Anthony said, you're making me want to buy a Mac Pro. I know <laughs> that's uh, it, it's true. Um, but to be honest, you don't have to have the latest and greatest machine. Uh, if you're working with heavy 80 megapixel files, then it, it becomes more apparent that having a big fast machine is, is nice. Uh, it means that when you zoom into 100%, say we did have the latest and greatest Mac Pro, if I do a option command zero to 100%, it's instantaneous to build to 100%. But this machine is a much lower, lower spec. It's just a laptop. But you can see on an 80 megapixel file, when I pan about, it's still coming in pretty good considering. So like so. So there's good performance gains to be had by uh, all of us. Uh, Dan is asking, uh, only one clone or heal per layer. Yes, that's how it is right now. We could, of course, improve on that in the future. But yes, each layer just has one uh, source point as such. Jason's asking, is there any changes with uh, shadow recovery? Yes, it's improved a little bit. Not as dramatically as the highlights, but, but, um, but yes. Alan's asking, um, is there any more plans to add lenses to the list of supported ones? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. We're always adding lenses. If anyone's using Sony, just so you don't get misled, uh, if you look in the lens corrections, and this goes for some other manufacturers, not just um, Sony, uh, Panasonic for one as well, purely because I have a, a Panasonic, um, you might see an entry here which says manufacturer profile. So this is shot with a, a Sony a 7 i luckily had on loan for a little bit. Um, you see it's the 35 mil lens, but if you choose manufacturer profile, then we can read the EXIF data in the lens itself from Sony. And then we can use that to correct. So we don't need to profile the lens. We can just use the manufacturer data as well. So it's completely possible. What is new for chromatic aberration uh, is that you can say analyze. You could do this in version seven, but you had to do it individually on every single image, which was a real pain. 
very time consuming. What you can do in version eight is select uh, 100 images or 1,000 images, and you can say analyze, and it will analyze all images for chromatic aberration at once. So that's a nice little uh, time saving feature. The benefit of analyzing chromatic aberration is that no two lenses are, are the same, unfortunately. While distortion characteristics in a lens is pretty similar lens to lens, uh, chromatic aberration does vary a fair bit depending on the samples. So if you analyze chromatic aberration, we do a better job than uh, the model correction itself. Uh, the shortcut for clone is um, B for brush. So you're selecting draw mask and erase mask and G for gradient mask like so. As I said, we do a webinar on local adjustments uh, this year. So I think it's a really strong feature in Capture One and it's well worth getting to, uh, uh, to grips on that. Uh, to move the mask, um, Russell was asking, uh, basically when you select the layer and you've got the brush selected, uh, you'll basically see the, uh, the points uh, uh, pop up, says he. Oh, so once you have the mask displayed, uh, you can see the points like so. So if you wanted to pick a different source point, you could just move it. If you wanted to pick a different finishing point, you could move it like so. So I just used a simple repair to get rid of that that bit of lens flare or dirt on my lens or, or whatever it was. Uh, when the mask is hidden, then uh, it goes away like so. Okay, I'm just keeping an eye on the watch. We've got five uh, minutes to go as such. Uh, Derek's asking, is there a 50% sale coming out soon? <laughs> no, I'm afraid not. Um, certainly with a new uh, product. Um, uh, no, no discounts. Sorry, you've got to pay full whack. Uh, but there is a promotion on subscriptions towards the end of the, the, the year uh, because um, you can subscribe to Capture One. You can still buy an outright license if you wish, uh, but you can subscribe to Capture One as well if you uh, want to. So you have different options and there's offers on that. Uh, for towards the end of the year. If you're upgrading from Express, that's on a discount. There's also a good price if you're upgrading from uh, Pro uh, as well. Yep, I agree, Anthony. There will be a webinar just on adjustments and adjustment brush. Don't forget to check uh, our um, uh, events page and you'll be able to see all the forthcoming stuff. There's lots of different things uh, coming as such. To finish up, we just have a look at the uh, clarity tool because uh, that's also had a new improvement and lots of people have given us really nice feedback uh, about that. Uh, if we just bring the clarity tool out uh, here, let's just not put him on top of uh, the bird. You can dock tools together, by the way, just again for customizing the interface. If you bring it close to another tool, they then become sticky like that so that and you can just break them apart like so so for clarity you'll see four methods natural is the latest and greatest one uh, in version seven you only had the three underneath here um, neutral which i say was the default does a nice job of adding clarity uh, to an image as such you can see uh, before and after like so but what neutral does sorry natural does um, is it's a really nice gentle clarity adjustment it doesn't go too crazy with the contrast it doesn't affect the saturation or color balance at all or anything like that it just adds a really lovely mid-tone contrast uh, into an image and you can push it a little bit harder before it starts to look ugly uh, if you experiment with punch what you'll find is that when you go harder you see it adds saturation to the image uh, as well, which is fine for some applications like, you know, this kind of stuff where we want to shout about colors. But when we need to be a bit more subtle, then natural is working really, really nicely. You can do that on a local adjustment as well. Don't forget. So clarity is part of the uh, local adjustment engine. Uh, for those of you who like uh, black and white, uh, we saw that briefly. Uh, the black and white engine uh, has had an improvement in that you can push the sliders harder and uh, you'll get much less noise in the image. It tended to be the way in version seven. If you're aggressive with the sliders, the image will get 
uh, noisy. If you think this image is noisy, that's also another new feature, which is film grain. So if we just zoom in on the face here, like so, I'll come out a little bit. So basically, we have a wonderful film grain em emulation. Uh, we never set out the task to emulate different films like Fuji Provia or whatever, Agfa APX. We simply have different grain types. And then you can decide how you want that grain to look. It's based on a mathematical model. We're not scanning old film stock and simply overlaying that. We're mathematically reproducing the grain because the grain structure varies depending on exposure, um, contrast, lots of different factors. And we can get the grain looking much nicer by mathematically building it as opposed to using a scan of some old film stock. So basically, you pick your grain type. Impact is almost like an uh, opacity slider. So the lower the impact, the harder it is to see the grain on the image. So if I go to 100, uh, you're going to really notice it. And the granularity is basically how grainy is it. But this works wonderful for black and white and, and color images as such. Uh, Diana is saying, is there a subscription? Yes, there is. So basically, just to, to be absolutely clear, um, you can buy your Capture One license outright, as you always have done. No change there whatsoever. If you prefer, you can subscribe on a month-to-month -month basis as well. And that could be for two licenses, for 10 licenses. So if you work in a studio and there's five of you, you could just have a subscription for the whole studio, for example. The easiest thing to do to see what's available is to go to the Capture One store. Have a look here under Buy. So phase1.com, the store you can always see. And then you've got buy, subscribe, and upgrade. To see what you can upgrade to, simply log in, and it will give you a list of what your licenses are and how you can upgrade. But you can see here, you can still, you can still buy single user seats, multi seats, and you can subscribe uh, to multi user seats. Uh, as well for various different time periods. And you can see right now it's eight euros a month. If you're in the US, that will show as a dollar value, which I can't remember what it is uh, right now as such. OK, all right. Um, someone's asking, is that my daughter? No, it's my son, but he is very effeminate looking, I know, but it's because he's got a pretty face. That's why. <laughs> but yeah, it's my it's my son. My daughter's lurking in this catalog uh, somewhere else. <laughs> OK, um, let's have a look at very quick export before we have to, to go. So I'm not going to pick a bunch of images. Let's just work with what we've got here. Five images. Let's just get rid of these tools out the way. And if we go to this tool tab here, which is the process recipes, this is what you're going to see in Capture One 8 by default. Um, in Capture One 7, there was only one recipe called Untitled, which wasn't particularly helpful. These are basically different ways to output your images. You can make your own by hitting plus, or you can use the, the default ones here. So if we just take this example, JPEG 1280 on the long edge, all that does is give you a JPEG file that is 1280 pixels. What I do want to point you towards, which is uh, different in version 8, is that under adjustments, you can do this wonderful thing called ignore crop. Uh, it's been well requested. Um, especially for those on commercial shoots where they may be cropping images to show to the client on the day. Uh, but when you want to export, you want to have the full image size for the retouches and in case the client changes their mind, which of course they always do. So on the export, you can say ignore crop and you'll get the complete size of the image out. Once you've decided on your recipe, you just need to tick you can have multiple recipes. So if you wanted a JPEG, a TIFF, et cetera, you could just check lots. Decide on your output. Let's just call this, um, make a new folder called output, like so. And uh, all you need to do is say process, like so. This is a background task, so you can carry on working uh, on your images. This is another performance improvement. Uh, you can see the progress bar zipping away here. So that's for five images. Again, if you have a fast Windows machine or Mac machine, this will be done in no time at all. So we can see here under pictures, we had my 
six different shots there output in very little time so that's from a sony that's an 80 megapixel file that's an 80 megapixel file that's a nikon d800 so relatively heavy files spat out into six jpegs in uh, not much time at all so all of you are going to see uh, an improvement there in uh, output speed okay uh, can you import recipes made in seven uh, yes you can if you go up here you can say uh, add recipe uh, sorry uh, no you can't actually but there is a way to to do it because these recipes they're just simple text files and they're stored in the application support folder so I won't go into it here as we're running out of time, but if you find the Capture One application support folder, you can see all of these as little basic XML files. So you can just move them across from version seven to version eight. So yes, it is uh, possible. Uh, okay, before uh, we go, as we have run out of time, I just want to point you towards uh, tomorrow, uh, because if this has inspired you uh, somewhat. I'm just going to switch uh, screens for a second. Uh, tomorrow's webinar is why upgrade. So that basically it's going to be a bit more in depth. Today was really aimed at those of you who might not have had much exposure to Capture One before. So to give you a rough rundown of how the application works. Um, and tomorrow we can go in a bit more depth about some of the other improvements like um, uh, we could talk about lens corrections in a bit more depth we can look at local adjustments a bit more and so on and so forth so we're going a bit more depth tomorrow uh, if you want to sign up what i do is i just uh, paste the sign up link in the chat window or you can find it on our registration page uh, so let's put that in the chat window that should come through right now uh, additionally next week i should say let's just bring that up uh, next week um, if you remember i mentioned or use some images from ryan he's going to do a guest webinar with us on october uh, the first uh, so he's going to talk about his work. He's going to show us in Capture One how he adjusts his images and gets his his look and style. So I think that would be a really nice webinar to join and, and interact with uh, Ryan as well. Now, as uh, I tried my best, but I couldn't get to every single question that uh, is on the list. So I'm going to hang on the line for a little bit more, five or 10 minutes more, have a scan down the list and try to answer uh, a few more. I shall do my best. Uh, remember, I did record this webinar. So look out in your inbox, check your spam uh, filter and spam box as well. It will be an email from webinar at phase one dot com and you'll see a link in there to the YouTube recording of what you've just seen uh, today. There will also be a survey as well, uh, which you're welcome to answer and let me know your thoughts on today's uh, webinar too. So thank you very much for your attendance. Sorry we overran a little bit, but as there is lots of things to talk about in Capture One. Uh, so I'll pop back to the questions list now and chat to you all for a little bit longer. Many thanks for your attendance. Uh, enjoy Capture One if you haven't tried it yet and see you all again soon. Take care.